Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena action. In the last video, I just wrapped up a pretty good priest run. It was it was solid. It was it was solid. You know, I guess I don't have to worry about spoilers so much with this continuous series thing. So yeah, I'll just say that uh, got ten wins as the priest. Lost both of my last two games to the same other priest. That was kind of annoying, but still, ten wins is good. And the run before that, I had nine wins as paladin. Today, I have a daily quest for warlock. So uh, let's go ahead and grab the warlock here. All right, kicking things off with the pretty easy thing pick, I think, the Violet Teacher. Uh, the Pyromancer, you could say, well, what if you're going aggro? Wouldn't you want to have the two drop? But, you know, the, the Pyromancer kind of is counterproductive. It ends up killing off your own cheap stuff if you do go aggro. So I'll take the Violet Teacher here. Call it, uh, call it, call it close. So here I could grab Shadow Bolt. It's not my favorite removal spell in the world. And if I am going aggro, the Abusive Sergeant would be much more important. So I'm going to take a little bit of a risk. I'm going to grab the Abusive Sergeant and see if aggro is still a possibility here. Ah, uh, this sucks. So what I'm going to do is take the cheapest creature, the Taunter. Even though this is not the greatest Taunter, I'd rather have an Iron for a Grizzly. It may help protect some of my minions. Oh, God. Okay. Well, Blood Imp is just garbage, in my opinion. So I'm going to take a Boulder Fist Ogre, and we might not do aggro this time. I mean, I'll still try it if possible. Like, Flame Imp obviously is good. But uh, we might have to shift into more of a mid-range type of thing. Okay. Well, we'll get a card drawer there. Ah, so here I could take Hellfire, which is a very nice mass removal card. It would not exactly close the doors on me playing aggro, but it would certainly tamper things a bit. Demon Fire is more in line with playing an aggressive deck. Oh boy, we'll take the Demon Fire. Alright, so another option for Blood Imp, I still think this is a bad card, so we'll take Spectral Knight. And okay, this is no longer going to be an aggro deck, unfortunately. Here I'll take Shadow Bolts, so that I'm not passing on all the ones that I see. I'll grab a Sludge Belcher. Yeah, we're just going to go straight forward Warlock here. Nothing fancy dancy. I'll try to keep my curve low if I can, but uh, it's not It's not going to be a big priority. Succubus, I think, has always been a bad card, so I'll take the Razor of Hunter instead. Golem seems good. Wouldn't mind some more two drops. Here we have one of the new three drops, Dancing Swords. I already have a bunch of three drops, though, so we'll take the Stormwind Knight for some chargey goodness. Another Demon Fire for some more removal seems good. Now here... I'm not going to pass on a Chillwind Yeti. Drain Life is a pretty mediocre removal spell. Paying uh, three mana to get two damage kind of sucks. So I'll take the Yeti, which is very, very solid. Ugh. Thankfully, the Worgen is playable. And yes, there is absolutely no chance now that this is going to be any kind of an aggro deck. So do I take the Spiteful Smith? Kind of mediocre as a five... Well, it's not mediocre as five drops go, but, you know, compared to Spectral Knight as a Warlock, it's pretty sad. I just hate spiking at three mana. Then again, I don't really want a seven drop when I've already got... Three fives and sixes. So we'll take the Spiteful Smith, I guess. But man, am I not that thrilled about it. Okay, so I think taking another Boulder Fist Ogre would be greedy here. I've already got four cards at five or higher, all of which are very beefy indeed. So I'm going to take the Raider just to, you know, increase my odds of getting early drops. And here, I think I'll be, um, I think it'd be greedy to grab another one of these four drops. I'll take the Sun Fury Protector for some more taunt and some more early plays. Wolf Rider for some reach and some damage would be good. I think the Tide Hunter is a pretty weak two drop. Loot Hoarder is solid. Now, Zombie Chow. Zombie Chow. You know, I think this is a really good card. Later in the game, it can kind of screw, screw you over, but here I'm actually going to grab it. A 2-3 for 1 mana is a deal. For sure. Another Demon Fire? Sure. I don't want Lord of the Arena here. And since this ended up being not a particularly aggressive deck, I will grab Hellfire for some board clear and so forth. Ah, we have a Void Caller. So this is a 3-4 for 4. It's the Warlock new card. When it dies, you put a random demon from your hand onto the battlefield. Now, this, I think, has the potential to be very annoying. It, it lets you put bad demons like Felguard and uh, Doomguard, well, demons with bad drawbacks, onto the board without having to suffer the drawback. However, I don't actually have that many demons in this deck. I've got the uh, Zombie Child's not a demon. I've got the Flame Imp. And, I mean, that's it. So... Yeah, that's it. So, Sludge Belch, that's not a demon. Spectral Knight's not a demon. Yeah, I've only got that one demon. So, we're just gonna grab another Boulder for Stoker, then. I mean, the, the advantage of the, 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 the thing, the Demon Caller, is that people sometimes will be afraid to kill it. But if they have to kill it, they will. So, you don't really gain much. We'll take another Shield Bearer. And I think as a Warlock with Gnomish Inventor here... Is that my only card drawer, the Gnomish Inventor? Hmm. So yeah, I have, a, I have Gnomish Inventor plus the hero ability for drawing cards. So I could take a Cult Master, but I don't think the curve really supports it very well. We'll take a Dial of Alpha for some buffs and some more early plays. Mortal Coil, thank you, finally! Ah, I love that card. 
And I will take an Owl here, because Silence is good nowadays. So if I take in Void Caller, um, I could have put a Felguard down. The Void Terror, I didn't really get any synergy with it. It doesn't really work. I mean, it works great with like Nerubian Eggs and stuff like that. But uh, I didn't really get much synergy with Void Terror. So we'll just grab Twilight Drake, I suppose, for another good 4-drop. Ah, boy. I don't think this deck turned out very well. For a couple of reasons. Number one, I think the best Warlock decks in the arena are aggro. And this most definitely is not. For another, I have no Soul Fires. And just the one mortal coil. I seem to have uh, quite a lot of demon fires and a shadow bolt. I got offered those a lot, but uh, the demon fire and shadow bolt are definitely inferior removal spells to soul fire and mortal coil. And I just have a curb. I mean, it's got a decent amount of early stuff and mid stuff, but as a warlock, you really want to be aggro so that you can life tap more. And if you're playing expensive minions, then you're not life tapping. So you kind of lose out on that warlock potential to just overwhelm the board and then overwhelm the opponent. Oh gosh, I get back a 6-drop and a 4-drop, after I'm only getting a 6-drop, a 4-drop, and a 5-drop, and I get Demon Fire here, which is a bit annoying, because against a Paladin, if you don't get anything early, he's just going to make a Recruit, and you can't do anything about it, because Warlocks obviously can't just kill Recruits for free. I will be playing the Sunfree Protector, though, on turn 2, to uh, have some board presence. I'm not going to do any kind of handlock shenanigans, trying to get this Twilight Drake super big. It can be silenced by the Paladin, it can be peace kept. If he doesn't have either of those things, a, a big Twilight Drake on turn 4 would be really amazing, but uh, I don't really want to play any games, we'll just play our minion and call it a day. Oh my god. Uh, the odds of this thing dying to a mad bomber, which is a quick FYI, are uh, 1 in 27, so I would have been a little bit annoyed, to make that very annoyed if that Sunfree Protector had actually died. Here we have a good use for Demon Fire, so we'll kill that Mad Bomber, keep our minion out here. And then next turn it's going to be Drake, and then Spectral Knight, and then Ogre. So as long as he doesn't do anything super amazing, we should be good. Now this is a pretty good card for him, it'll kill my Protector, and also live to tell about it. Which is doubly annoying, because that means I have to kill this thing, and then I have to kill it again. Which is just a big old pain in the ass, but I do have some pretty big minions coming down, so... Oh my god, you got to be fucking kidding me. Well, at the very least, the Harvest Golem died. Uh, I could just play Shadow Bolt and Demon Fire to clear his board, which is actually kind of tempting. I think I'm going to do it. I mean, I keep my creature out here. I can still play the Ogre next turn, and I'm just hoping he maybe skips a beat and doesn't have anything good here. He's got seven cards to my four, soon to be five, but I am at full health, so I can life tap relatively freely if I need to catch up on cards. I'm more concerned with the board than I am with cards at the moment. Alright, so Violet Teacher, does he have anything else? Oh, please don't have anything else. That is a secret. Oh, God. And he gets a student. God, if this is Avenge, I am in a world of hurt. Please don't be... It's actually Repentance. Oh, my God. Well, so my Ogre is going to die to a free 1-1 one, one and a 1-mana secret. So he killed my Ogre for a mana. This game could not go... Any worse? Okay, never mind. It just it just went worse. It actually just went worse. Oh my Christ! I just can't get anything going this game. I played my minions, but he got that golem. He had the teacher, and then he had a really good secret under the circumstances. That'll teach me to disrespect repentance, I suppose. This game is pretty much over already, but we'll we'll work it out. Cookie Momo is the name of this paladin's game. Oh my god, ridiculous. I had a really good uh, thing of minions. Drake, then the uh, sp Spectral Knight, and the Ogre, but he just had a good combination of minions and answers to my minions. And a nice epic Avenging Wrath to just seal the deal there. Ah, here's a coin for good measure. Yeah, I'm getting that Violet Teacher going. This is just uh, a beatdown of epic proportions. I could still potentially win if I got a Hellfire. That would clear away all these 1-1s. One -ones. And the Demon Fire would finish off the Violet Teacher. But looks like that's not going to happen. I could play the Ogre here, but what I really need to do is get more minions down. Rather than just one big one, I'd rather have a couple of sturdy ones. Problem is, he's got 7 damage here. I'm down to 7 health. I can't really life tap anymore. And then just a little bit more damage and I'm dead. Uh, well, I had two really good games to start my return to the arena. Two re oh, sorry, two really good runs. The Paladin run and the Priest run both did spectacularly. So I suppose I deserve a little bit of bad luck. Let me 
I'm due. He had plenty of spells to back up that Violet Teacher, too. To add insult to injury. Hellfire? I mean... I'd be down to 4 health after the Hellfire. Okay, I'd be down to 5 health after the Hellfire. And then I'm pretty much dead, because I have no life gain. I would I never saw any Farseers, or Voodoo Doctors, or Dark Scale Healers, or even the Priest of Luna. I saw no life gain except for Drain Life. He elects to kill that Spiteful Smith. Uh, I think he actually wasted a student there? Yeah, he didn't need to throw that student in. Well, now that it matters. So it's Demon Fire, Ogre, and Zombie Chow. So the fact that he chose to go after the smith gave me a lot of health, but he's got tons of cards. I can't really life gain to life tap to catch up. I think he's actually playing this imprecisely. Yeah, he threw away an extra minion for no reason, and um, unless did he have to kill the minion to make room on the board for more minions? Uh, maybe that was why he killed one. No, I still think I, th I think he threw one away. Needlessly. You can get some health off the zombie chow, or you can go for my face. Okay, now he decides to just go for broke. Which I, he probably should have done last turn. Alright, he hedges his bets, kills the zombie chow. Blah, blah, blah. I need taunt. I need taunt. I don't get it. So we're finally getting some board board presence, but the damage has been dealt. That redemption, or that repentance, god damn it, that was stupid. Uh, who plays with repentance? If that ogre had lived, it might all have been different. Okay. So there's a 5-5 five five that will kill me next turn. My worgen, which might have been helpful against this board of chumper nuggets, is frozen. I can kill off two of his creatures, but not the 5-5, five five, and that 5-5 five five does represent lethal damage. There's no Siphon Solar in this in this deck or anything like that. I don't have any single card that can kill it. I'm just screwed. This was quite the textbook victory for the Paladin. Well, the one part that maybe wasn't textbook was the Repentance. Blah. Blah, blah, blah. Alright, so we're dead at the moment. Let's life, life tap out of desperation. Mortal coil out of desperation. And always go out in style, ladies and gentlemen. Always go out in style. So, a little bit of a dispiriting opener, but you know, in both my priest and my paladin runs, I did have games that were just horrifically unlucky. Just like, absolutely monstrously horrifically unlucky. So it's possible that that's the same thing here, and I just got my bad luck out of the way early on. But I suspect not. I think this deck is just mediocre. Like, the curve, I think, would have been great for, like, a Paladin or a Priest deck. But for a Warlock deck, you want to try to be aggressive if you possibly can. It doesn't mean you should just always take the cheapest minion and then have a crappy deck. You have to kind of do what the draft tells you. Now, what the draft told me this time is you don't get to play aggro, which is unfortunate. And the draft also told me you don't get good cards like Soulfire, which is also unfortunate. And the draft also told me you don't ever get any of your two drops or one drops in your opening hand. So yeah, lots of lots of problems. I don't think I drafted this perfectly or anything, but uh, yeah, I could have could have had some extra advantages that I am not having. Granted, one of the chief features of my paladin and priest runs before this was that I had exceptionally good luck in the draft, and just had loads of quality cards. So do you play the zombie chow or the flame imp? I think you go for the zombie chow here, and the reason simply is that if it dies when the opponent is at full health, it, the death rattle is non-existent and you just get a 2-3 for one mana which is insanely good plus i have the direwolf alpha so if i need to deal three damage to something i can she's gonna coin into a two drop hopefully something i can kill with this zombie chow and it is an ooze all right so i have a couple of options here i could trade the chow for the ooze or i could um demon fire the ooze Demon Fire on Flame Imp is not super great, I don't think. I don't want to save for that combo. I could play Flame Imp Abusive Sergeant, just ignore the ooze and swing for four. Problem is, when the Chow dies, the four damage would be nullified. So yeah, we're just going to, I guess... Uh... Well, that's a cool voiceover. Da, yes. Da, da, da. Okay. <laughs> that's so awesome. Are right, we going to do this? 
play a flame and pass the turn. That was a really cool voiceover. I like it a lot. Yeah, Zombie Chow, I think, is just an amazing card. I, uh... I mean, yes, later in the game, it can sometimes backfire if you give your opponent health. But early on, it's just so strong. It's like a 2-3 for 1 with almost no drawbacks. All right, well, this is a pretty good opener. We got equal on cards here. I'm about to draw my fifth card equal to hers. Got an extra board presence here. She can ping away the sergeant, but that would be her whole turn. And then I could play the Stormwind Knight and swing for five, and she's down to 20, just like that. So I think this is going pretty well. She is behind in tempo, but I have lots of health. So even accounting for the fact that she's a mage, and as a, against a mage, you don't want to go too far down in health, I have quite a bit of life tapping that I can do to catch up on cards. And I'm only down... Uh, one card. Alright, this is a nuisance for sure. I might have to just ignore it. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to just ignore that guy. I could silence it. But I'd rather save the silence for taunt. Demon Fire would let this be a 5 4, which doesn't help too much. Now, if I could play Demon Fire and the Wolf and trade, that would be something, but since I cannot do that, we'll just play the Wolf in the middle. And we're going for broke. Now, the problem with this deck is it doesn't really qualify as in as a burn deck there's no soul fires here demon fire and mortal coil my main removal and shadow bolt my main removal do not target the face so i am going to have a hard time punching through the damage that it needs to be punched through what am i going to do here probably play the no mission mentor and the owl so let's play the no mission mentor first always draw cards first spectral knight could be handy we'll silence the fen creeper Get five damage through, and it's going to be tricky to deal that last eight damage. I don't have much in the way of direct damage in this deck, quite tragically. I have a Wolf Rider, who's my hero. And other than that, I just have to hope that I get some minions to stick. So if she, all she has to really do, she doesn't know it, because she might think for all, all, for all she knows, I've got Doom Guards in here and Soul Fires. But she doesn't know it. All this mage has to do is click, kill my minions, and then she wins. What to do? Throw a taunt down for good measure so my Wolf Rider doesn't work, and then I'm really boned. I can't deal with anything like, say, a Sunwalker. So she can put taunt on her minions or play another big taunting minion, and I'm just I'm just done, done for. Uh, I mean, I'll play this Boulder Fist Ogre. She'll have to kill the Ogre with a Fireball or something, but really, it's, um, it's pretty much hopeless. All right, so she Dark Iron Dwarfs away to the death of my uh, big guy. Storm of Night. She pings off the Owl so I can get her down to six. That was a pretty good play on her part, I think. So here we got a couple of options, and I can play the Ogre or I can do the Violet Teacher and Demon Fire to get a student. I can also play the Spectral Knight and Demon Fire to kill the Elemental and swing for two. Spectral Knight is a little bit less durable than the Ogre, but it's as good as it needs to be. You know, I think, so it's get an extra power and toughness versus the Teacher. And the student, how valuable is the student? I don't think the student's that valuable. So we're going to play the knight, demon fire the elemental, and put this damage on. So we're just trying to get six damage through. Wolf Rider would give me three of it. And that's it, I think. I've already used Stormwind Knight and Abusive Sergeant. And Direwolf Alpha, for that matter. So yeah, I don't have much direct damage in this deck. That's a problem. I don't think I was really offered any in my draft. She pretty much needs to clear my board and put down a taunt, and she'll win this game. Even with all my life tapping, it's unlikely I'd get anything to stick. As long as she has the, the ability to clear my board. and Or as long as she has, like, you know, polymorphs and flame strikes, I won't be able to get anything to stick. And if she can get a taunt in there, I'm not going to deal that last six damage. She's hesitating, so it seems like she doesn't have anything obvious, like nothing like a Sunwalker. Or anything like that that would just obviously be good here to stop my advances. Another Dark Iron Dwarf would be great for her, or an Abusive Sergeant, letting this Dark Iron Dwarf kill my Spectral Knight. Defender of Argus would be great to, to buff up her guys and give her taunt. There's lots of cards, Sunwalker, Lord of the Arena even, for that matter. There's just a lot of stuff that would be really good for her, and would pretty much guarantee the win. But she seems to have none of it, which is remarkable. That is, I guess, my little bit of good luck. Stormwind Champion is really not what she needed here. Because she cannot kill both of my minions with the Stormwind Champion. She can only kill one of them, so this no mission Venter is just tickling away. Alright. What do you do here? Do you play the Violet Teacher and the Golem? Or do you life tap an Ogre? 
I think I'm going to play the Violet Teacher and the Golem simply because the more stuff I put onto the board, the more likely it is that something will stick. So now, with what she has, and she really struggled last turn just to kill two simple creatures. Now with what she has, she can't kill all of my creatures either, and she seems to not have any taunts. So this is a p potentially going to be a win. Oh yes, I have Hellfire. Hellfire will deal direct damage. That's three damage from Hellfire. So if I can deal one more damage to her, I might actually uh, live long enough to top deck Hellfire and win. Or Wolf Rider if she persists in not playing any taunts. This is why you want Soul Fire as a Warlock. It's just so important to be able to deal direct damage. And then maybe I should have taken that Drain Life. Drain Life in a pinch will be direct damage to the face. The Alright, the, the Auctioneer is not what she wants here at all. She does not want a big body and card draw. She needs removal and taunt. Arcane Explosion gives her a card and kills the Golem. She also kills the Violet Teacher, but this Gnomish Inventor is the hero. Just keeps on slipping through for damage and I will get the Hellfire to finish this off. That was unbelievably good luck. Well, you know what? I had unbelievably bad luck in the first game and unbelievably good luck here, so that's cancelled out. I guess the rest of this draft will will depend on my merits as a player. That's not true, of course, as we all know. Probably doesn't work that way. It's it's all independent events. But whatever, we'll be I think I think a little bit of superstition is, is good. It's good to be it's good, it's good to possess as a gamer. Ah. Alright. So um with this draft, with this arena, I, I would be happy to make it to three wins. I just really don't feel this deck is all that strong. Even that one I just had was very weak. And you know, Paladin, ah, uh, Paladin. Viking the Paladin. Mortal Coil is actually very nice to see here. That'll kill a recruit for me. And we'll see if he does anything on turn one before getting too heavy on the analysis. Okay, so I think I am going to coin into this Unfree Protector. Now the reason for that is that if he plays a big drop, like with 3 health, I can Abusive Sergeant to kill it. If he plays a Recruit, I can kill it with uh, Mortal Coil even, and then use the Abusive Sergeant to swing for 4 damage at his face. Or if I get a different card, I could do something else. Let's see, do I get another 2 drop? No. So do you just kill this thing and Life Tap, or do you Mortal Coil and play the Abusive Sergeant? I think that... um. Against Paladin's board presence is everything. So I'm doing this because or two for two board reasons. Number one, you know, board presence is so important against Paladins. And then number two, uh, Paladins can't really kill these types of creatures very easily early on. Alright, as a warlock, I don't have a good answer to that card. But the Raging Organ can do a lot of damage to it. Mainly the problem is if he puts like a Blessing of Kings on this thing and it becomes a 6-12. He said, I am sorry, which hints at that very possibility. Uh, do I throw these guys away before a Consecration? Well, Consecration is not going to be good for him. Yeah, I'll just pass. I don't really have much this that we could fish up that would be very good even. He has True Silver Champion to kill my Worgen, which is a big problem because that would have dealt uh, 7 damage to the Death Lord all by itself. So him having True Silver Champion here is a real problem. So although he had a slow start, he's got a pretty damn good continuation. Play Violet Teacher. And I will go ahead and damage this thing because it's going to die to True Silver Champion anyway, so I might as well get the, the beats on the Death Lord while I can. Uh, that's definitely a bad turn of events. Warlocks, like as I've said before, are very bad at killing Death Lords. Or not, not very bad, but are not among the best classes for killing Death Lords. He'll take out the Violet Teacher, spending no mana to do so, and he now needs to kill this Sunfree Protector, or else I'll kill the Death Lord. He plays another double-edged minion, the Dancing Swords, which will give me a card once I kill it, and he stops me from actually playing this Biteful Smith. Oh, that's annoying. That is actually really painful. I can't even life tap and golem. Ah, oh, man. So do I demon fire to kill this thing? If I do, I could uh, kill off the mana wraith with my sun free protector and then play the golem after that. Well, let's do that. Stormwind Knight. Uh, that's not bad. So I could actually kill this mana wraith with the Stormwind Knight instead of with the sun free protector. And I think I will do this. Play a golem. Swing. 
So actually, although that looked bad with that Death Lord and the True Silver Champion, he didn't have a strong follow-up on turn 5. So, actually, I think I'm doing okay here. He's got 6 cards to my 6, and I am going to get another card once this Dancing Sword is killed. So I feel like I'm doing okay here. Now, the Fen Creeper is good for him because it stops me from getting my card from the Dancing Swords. I can either play the Ogre to protect my interests, or I could play the Sludge Belcher for some durability. I'm going to just go ahead and play the Ogre and pass the turn. Paladin's going to have a hard time dealing that if he doesn't have a Peacekeeper. And if he does, well, then he does. But it's just one one rare card in the world. He might not have drafted it, might not have drawn it. Got a Blessing of King's FN Creeper. Oh, my God. Well, okay, so this game has turned right back around to being terrible. Now there are a couple of things that I need to kill. Although, you know, this is all right. I can Hellfire, can't I? Yeah, I can Hellfire here. I think I'm going to have to do that. So we're going to run the Golem into the Fen Creeper. Unfortunately, the damaged golem is going to die to Hellfire, but this does uh, catch me back up a little bit. Wouldn't mind it having that Bloodsail Raider first. I'd rather play that than the Shield Bearer, but at the end of the day, we're about equal on health. He's got four cards to my four cards, and he's got the turn. His Guardian of Kings, I don't know why he keeps saying, I am sorry. It's not like that was like a spellbinding play. It's just a 5-6 that heals you up a little bit. This guy's a little bit uh, full of himself, I'm beginning to think. We'll play the Spiteful Smith, and let's get the Blessed Raider down as well. Try to get as much board presence as possible. I have some removal here, and even a Sludge Belcher to play afterwards. So we should be okay. My, my Shield Bearer will just die unceremoniously. He's got another tough minion. And Nightblade, okay. Yeah, you do that. All right, so here, what am I going to do? I think I'm going to hit this guy with my Spiteful Smith and then Demon Fire to kill it. And I'm going to Shadow Bolt the Nightblade. That's five mana, leaving me with four mana, which I will use to play the Gnomish Metro. So I'll play this first. You should always draw cards first. And I got that guy. Hmm. Well, I think it's still more important to kill his stuff than to play a Mediocre Taunter. I swing. This game's close. He, if he continues having big cards like he did before, I will be in trouble. This guy seems to have a fetish for high health minions. What with the Guardian of Kings, the Death Lord. Alright, there's a Flesh Eating Ghoul, much more of a humble creature there. And a Consecration to kill most of my board. Fortunately, this Bloodstained Raider... Well, it die, it survives Consecration, but it does not have the ability to kill the Ghoul without some help from a Timber Wolf, from a Dire Wolf Alpha or an Abusive Sergeant. And I actually got one. Lovely dovely. So we will do the Direwolf Alpha. Kill the ghoul. And play our taunts. He does have an advantage here though. He's got well, he's got three cards and a recruit. I have just three cards. So I guess I have the advantage technically because all my stuff is on the board already. His is still in his hand. But we're at 10 mana. He could easily play stuff from his hand. And my life tapping. I'm going to life tap down to the wire against a paladin. Someone called it. He heals up the minion. And kills off my Taunter, which is pretty sensible. Plays another Guardian. That's unfortunate. Not so much for the life game, but just for it being a 5-6. He says thank you. This is a very bad-mannered asshole. It's life tap. Owl does not help me. It's too little too late for that owl. So, yeah. We'll play the Hunter. Kill his beastie. McBeastie. Play that. And think. Do I want to play the Owl here just to have a body? I think I actually I do. This is a 2-1 for 2, which is extremely underwhelming. But I think it needs to get played. I should have actually put it on... Oh, God, I messed up. I should have put it on the left side of the Sludge Belcher. He says, thank you again. Says, oh, Jesus, this guy has non-stop big minions. And he can kill past my Sludge. I should have really put the Owl on the other side. That was extremely foolish. All right, Demon Fire comes at a pretty good time. We will kill that thing. Uh, unfortunately, this bad placement of the wolf screws me over. I'd like to kill the recruit. Well, let me actually life tap first. Ogre, hey. Let's do that. I do have to kill this harpy. So we'll do it like this. 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 And so I've got an ogre. He's got a recruit. I can throw my wolf at one of his recruits. 
And it's just a matter of how far can I life tap. I've got only seven cards, but we might run into fatigue as an issue here. Zombie chow. Okay, well, we'll life tap one more time. Flame him. Right, I forgot I had those. Okay, so we'll do this, this, and I'm going to take a moment to kill off this stuff. And now, of course, I cannot life tap anymore. He's got no cards, and I've got plenty of minions, so I should be okay. He says, thank you again. I wish there was a you're welcome emote. Alright, so this turn finally, although the loot hoarder gives him a card and that's kind of sad, I can kill off all of his stuff and start getting some damage through. I'm not going to life tap anymore. That would be foolhardy. We'll just play our really good 5 drop and see how much space we can beat. So it really depends on what he got here. If these are really strong minions, then I'll have to deal with them and throw stuff away. But if these are weak minions and they're not removal, I'll be in good shape. Abomination will kill off these two things. Frost Wolf Warlord, uh, it's fine. All right, so my, my ogre gets to live here. Twilight Drake, hilarious. Okay, so since these guys are going to die regardless, I'm going to throw them at the Abomination. Uh, now we will kill the Frost Wolf Warlord with my Spectral Knight. Swing for six. The Drake is really sucky here. Really sucky, This because this is a 4-1, so a recruit will just kill it. But I'm going to play it and pass the turn and just hope for the best. I might just hit him with both my minions and then risk getting burned out. I wish I had more life than five. If I had like 15 health, that would be a different story. I have to take... Actually, you know, I really shouldn't life tap because I think I still have a Hellfire in here. No, I already used Hellfire. Have I used Hellfire this game? Uh, I don't remember if I used Hellfire or not. Crap. Because if I life tap down to three, Hellfire will kill me. But I used it? Who can say? Um, this is unfortunate. The panda doesn't help me in the slightest. Shit. All right, we're life tapping. We're desperate. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this. We're going to kill the Sunwalker. With everything we got. Play the Panda, play the Yeti, and now I pretty much can't win. I mean, first of all, a bunch of cards will let him win on the spot, and second of all, I need to chew through a lot of health while killing these damned recruits every single turn. Bring out your dead. All right, that's a pretty weak drop. If he'd only gotten that instead of Sunwalker, I would be in much better shape. Now I have to kill at least two of these minions. Wolf Rider. Um, I lose. He's going to damage me for one. Yeah, there's no way I'll just life tap. There's no way, because I, I could kill everything he has, but then I, I would have just have died in two turns and I would have had no cards. So we lose to a bad-mannered asshole, which is the worst person to lose to. I might have been able to win if he hadn't had like all those big minions, if he'd gotten something stupid like the Undertaker earlier in the place of the Guardian of Kings. I would have been fine. If he hadn't had Blessing of Kings for a Fen Creeper, I would have been fine. If I'd had the Iron Beak Owl to silence the Fen Creeper, I would have been fine. Or even if I'd gotten something better than a Stormborn Knight off of his Death Lord, I would have been fine. So there's a lot of uh, bad luck going on in that game. I think, though, if I had drafted differently, I might have won that one. That Twilight Drake. Man, if I, I don't remember what else I had to choose from, but I think if I had been something with more than one health, I would have been in much better shape and I might have been able to win. Drastaloof the Priest. We'll keep one of the three drops, and we'll keep the removal. This is an annoying hand. You can coin into a pair of three drops, but then the two drop passes by. And you don't really want to play three drops on turn four, which is what it looks like I'm going to be doing. So, although the hand is full of cheap stuff, I didn't have two two drops, so I could play them back to back on turn one and turn two. And I have a bunch of three drops. What you really want is like one three drop and a four drop. This run is uh, going pretty badly to, co to compensate for the excellent runs I had previously. And of course, now I get a freaking two drop one turn too late. Play the panda first so I can just get it out of my hand. I don't really see much synergy with any of these cards in the panda, so I might as well throw it out there. Okay, another creature survives Mad Bomber's antics. Any power word shield, which is really annoying. Can I get a Dire Wolf Alpha, please? Or a Mortal Coil? Not a chance. Uh, there's just nothing good here. I don't want a two for one against this thing. This seems crappy. Throwing this in the way seems crappy because it can be healed. 
playing the worgen seems crappy. I guess the only thing that makes sense is the harvest golem. That was a very timely power word shield for the opponent. Very annoying. Ah, can't catch a break this run. Well, I caught one break against that mage. But other than that, it's just like all of a sudden everybody's a master. The last couple of runs, it would seem like I, I couldn't lose if I tried. All right, does he have anything else? Please just pass the turn. He has a fairy dragon. Damn it! All right, so again, I'm still hoping for a mortal coil or a direwolf alpha. Abuse of sergeant. That'll do, pig. That'll do. It doesn't matter whom I buff. Either way, one of them will die to the Balmor, one of them will die to the Fairy Dragon. Do I play the Taunter or the Worgen? Let's play the Worgen. The Worgen inhibits more of his possible plays. Although on turn 5 he could start playing legit minions. Storm, Pike, Commando. Well, that'll let's a 2 for 1 for him. Both of my minions will die to that guy. Do I use Demon Fire? I think I'm going to use the Demon Fire, even though it means not playing a Spiteful Smith. I think it's worth it to keep the Worgen on the table. Because if that was his best answer, the Stormpike Commando, it's possible he's not going to have anything good. And this Worgen will actually get the trip. This coin hasn't gotten used. Maybe I can use it with Spiteful Smith next turn? Uh, okay. I need to play the Ogre here, I think. Now, you might say, Papa Boris, why did you play the Ogre? Uh, isn't that vulnerable to Shadow Word Death, whereas Spiteful Smith isn't? But I need that extra power to kill his ogre off. Also, I could demon fire my Worgen and swing for eight. So if this can survive maybe one more turn, if this... No! Damn it! Ah, it's gonna die. False axe. Really hoping that Worgen could die so I could do the demon fire trick. Well, such is life. So we'll play the demon fire to kill this. My ogre will kill his ogre and live to tell about it. And now I'll play a Spiteful Smith. I guess things are going okay, so I never did use this coin, rather tragically. He's got six cards to my four, soon to be five, but I'm at full health, so I can life tap rather freely. I think this could be okay. Soul Priest will allow him to burn away my ogre. But it also means he can't heal himself. This is power word God damn it, these power word shields. Motherfucker. I was going to kill that thing with my dire wolf, but now it's all safe. Ah, Shadow Bolt, okay. Well, I think that is worth killing. And, uh, yeah, we'll do this. Oh, shoot, I should have life tapped. Well, I'll life tap first, or second. And, yeah, let's go ahead and drop a shield bearer over here. Could have coined into the wolf, but I'll save the wolf as a surprise. So he's got six cards to my three cards, coin and, and shapeshifter, but, uh, or shield, shield bearer, but I've got life tapping I can do. Okay, so this is actually pretty solid. Because this will have to waste a turn running into the shield bearer. And I am dippity doopity down with that. Wolf Rider, alright, well, it's happening, folks. So we're going to life tap first, because I'm a good player. Flame them, okay, great. We'll play the Dire Wolf Alpha. Tack with both of these. Put the Wolf Rider in the middle so it benefits from the Dire Wolf. Swing for four there. And we're going to play a Flame Imp for good measure. And pass the turn. So I'm threatening just to kill him. He needs Holy Nova here to stave me off. And he has it. Well, the good news is two of my minions lived. He has another Holy Nova! Are you goddamn kidding me? Jesus! Oh! Bowing out of the arena to a poor man's flame strike. You have motherfucking got to be kidding me. Ah. Uh, you've got to be kidding me. I just needed him to have a Holy Nova. The Shield Bearer survived it. The Ventrico Mercenary would have had to still attack the Shield Bearer. I could have finished him off, but he had two Holy Novas. Are you goddamn kidding me, Jesus? Well, you know what? It's good to get all the bad luck out of the way in one run rather than having it spread out over many runs. So here's a shitty run. Adding a dink to my new statistics. Nine, ten, then one. And since this was so short, we actually have time to do the next draft. I am still on this fucking quest for Priest or Warlock, but I won't pick Priest or Warlock because I've already played with both of those classes, if they are available. So yeah, we'll pass on Priest. Go ahead and do Warrior. We'll draft it, and then we'll start the actual games in the next run. All right, quality rare here, the Sun Cray Protector. And I'm going to go for the Wolf Rider here, although the Healer and the Storm and the Storm and Guardian are nice. I like with Warriors having reach, so I can burn the opponent out. The Arcanite Reaper is a good example of that. Argent Squire, I prefer over the Tide Hunter. 
by a long mile. The taunt selection there is easy. Sanjin is the best. We'll grab the weaponsmith for another weapon, so nice to have weapons here. And these are all, I think, solid cards. I am, however, going to grab the Azure Drake because as sexy as upgrade is, I want some card draw. And the Azure Drake is about as good as they come. Oh, this is ugly. Now, the Nightblade is a reach card, which can help burn opponent out, opponents out, but I'm not going to take... Well, I wouldn't want to take it normally. Um, the Frost Wolf Forward is at base as good as the Nightblade, but it can be bigger if you have other minions out. So, okay, I'll take him, although I don't like him because I just think the selection there was so weak. Okay, Warsong Commander, solid, solid card. Sunwalker. Let's see, this is a little bit expensive, but the Swordsmith is so bad, and the Light Warden is not good for anyone but Priests, that I will take a Sunwalker, because it's such a good card. Alright, Whirlwind and uh, Iron Beak Alley, I think, are my options here. Shield Block is a nice life gain slash cycling card, but the Whirlwind for removal and the Iron Beak Owl for silence, I think, are important nowadays. I'll take the Iron Beak Owl over the Whirlwind, but I might, I suppose, regret that. Okay, I get a Whirlwind now or Rampage. Rampage is nifty and all, but I think the Whirlwind is more important for, for clearing things off. I'll take a Mortal Strike to add some reach. Most of a Warrior's reach has to bypass Taunt. The Mortal Strike does not. That makes it a very potent card. This is all junk, except for the Kodo. Now, I would be pushing into the high curve area here with Kodo. But I'll take it because it is also removal. And the Pine Size Summoner is just not that good. Removal. Also, that was the only playable card. Frost Elemental, I might take in another day, but this is already a lot of expensive stuff, so I'm going to take Battle Rage for some tentative card draw. We'll take Storm and Knight for some reach and some removal. Now, do I take another Rathy Weaponsmith, or do I plug my hole with the Warrior? Let's take the Raider. I need some more early drops. You can see that a lot of my twos are actually not really twos. The Owl, the Heroic Strike, and the Battle Rage don't actually get played on turn two. So I'll take the Bloodsail Raider to have an actual curve here. Cool Taskmaster is one of my favorite cards in Hearthstone. Love that card so much. So we're versatile in this. Nice. And here, I know a lot of you are going to be screaming for me to take the Questing Adventure, but that's a pretty speculative card. I'd either want the Golem for some more burn potential or the Upgrade. Now, the Upgrade works with the Weaponsmith and, of course, the Arcanite Reaper. I'll take the Golem. I'll take the Golem for some reach. I love having really, really strong reach decks. I'll take a Grunt over the Panda for some Taunt and some more early plays. Spectral Knight is an amazing 5-drop, and I, I can't really take the Stone Tusk Boar. So, we'll take the other card here. Um, I have lots of opportunities for upgrade, and I feel bad passing on them all. I just don't think it's usually that good of a card. Now, the Archer Commander is certainly great. It adds reach to the deck and removal, but you can see the deck is getting expensive. So I'm going to take the Blade Master here, just to, uh, you know, have some, some plays. Execute is good to have uh, one of in the deck, and Cleave is just good to have in general. I don't want another Battle Rage, so I'll take a 3-drop Hunter, which is fine. And this is a very unfortunate pack. I really can't afford any more 5 or 6 drops, so I'm taking charge here, even though it's not actually a good card. Fiery War Eggs! I was afraid you were never going to show up. Thank you. i got enough 2 drops now. I can take more reach with the Wolf Rider, I think. And we're going to end... Okay, well, I suppose I'll fittingly end with, like, upgrade. I could have had, like, 5 of those... I think, without exaggeration... Whoa, stop! Without exaggeration, I could have probably had, like, 5 upgrades. Okay, so that'll do it for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. We'll do the games for this one. In the next one, please like and or subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.